Uh, good morning, this is Carol Stimmel. I'm the CEO and founder of Manifest Mind out of New York, uh, the United States. And we're in the Angerati studio today at the European Utility Week 2014. And today we have um, a data panel to discuss uh, a pretty buzzword and important topic, data analytics um, in the utilities. So joining me today, I have Edwin Poot with Energy Works, Jeff McCracken with iTron, and Einar Hoffman with Dong Energy. So we have a nice mix of individuals here today, and I just want to briefly um, reach out to all of our parties here and find out a little bit of their perspective on how analytics is really changing the delivery of energy to our consumers. Analytics is, um, you know, can be confusing. Sometimes we're not always sure if we're talking about enterprise, business-oriented analytics, operational analytics, or customer analytics, and they're, they're different but um, they all fundamentally serve our common goal of efficiency and improving our operations um, in our utilities. So let's start with Einer. And if you could just you know, get us going with a little bit of the utility perspective on how your use of analytics at Dong is changing the way you deliver energy and, and how are you doing that? I mean, you have a, a very interesting portfolio as well of renewables, so if you could just give us a quick rundown on that, that would be great. Yeah, thank you for that. The way we use uh, uh, analytics is to, to, to optimize our uh, operation of, of the different systems. We collect a lot of data, but the data is by itself is not of any volume, value. So we use analytics to actually get the insight we need to, to, to base our decisions on. And, and that's what we're seeing. And, 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 and the two examples I will mention here is what we are doing in, the, in the, our distribution grid, where we have um, a distribution grid. It's uh, rather old and we start to see uh, stress on, on the capacity. So we need insight to make the right decisions, how to balance the grid better or where to reinforce it. So we collect a lot of data, but the data by itself is of no value. So we use these analytics to, 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 to try to get into the key information that we can base our uh, decisions on. And, and what we have found is that it's, not, it, it, it's a challenge to, 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 to get access to the data, but it's even a bigger challenge to, to get into the actually key information. Okay. So, so that's what I'm... So you, Einar, you're the IT architect, right? I'm the IT architect for, 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 for the... For Which is interesting. I want to follow up on that in a bit yeah. after we get into our discussion because definitely there's a lot of question about who owns the analytic uh, capability in the utility. And sometimes it's IT, sometimes it's operations. So I'd like to touch on that later. But I want to talk to quickly uh, to Jeff McCracken here of iTron. So you're a, you're a product guy. You're the product line manager at iTron. Yes. And um, iTron's been around for a, a long time. I, as we were talking before um, our panel, we realized we'd worked together almost 10 years ago. Yes. So I'm wondering, um, with this perspective of analytics, how are you seeing the application of these, this new technology, this new way of looking at data? Um, how is it affecting the fundamental business of your customers? Uh, in all the different ways that you mentioned, um, really, there, I think it's... Improving the reliability of delivery of energy is, is really the one key factor. Uh, improving the customer satisfaction, right? Uh, and <clears throat> operational efficiencies, reducing cost of operations. Those are the, the three key areas I think the utilities are. And it's different types of analytics, the consumer engagement side and using analytics to better improve the customer experience. It's, it's a bit different than using analytics on, on the grid on the grid side to improve operations with voltage optimization and, and using data from the grid. So we have these different aspects that are being put together at the utility in, in some different ways. But overall, I mean, it's just a, it's just a, every time we find a new algorithm or a new correlation of the data or a new value proposition, we're just building that, building more into uh, the sophistication of the utility's ability to deliver energy. Right? Okay. And uh, Edwin, Edwin Poo, you're the founder the founder and the CEO of Energy Works. Yeah, that's correct. That's correct. Yeah. And you're you're very focused on on the customer piece. But one of the interesting things I found about your company um, has to do with your your perspective on innovation. A lot of people um, um, are concerned. I think, in, you know, when you think about 
making radical change in the utility, we can't just turn out the lights and go in and install our new systems and throw the switch back on. So how do you how do you bring your innovation to an enterprise like the utility and not turn everything on its head? Yeah, yeah. Uh, okay, so well, uh, what we have been seeing happening uh, the last years is that um, data becomes more becomes more dense. So to get value out of more dense data, it's more difficult. You have to scale up your internal uh, IT landscape, more servers, more capacity. And that's where utilities are struggling uh, because that's not their core business. So we decided to offer a solution like an infrastructure that enables utilities to efficiently do analytics on real-time data. Um, instead of using historical profiles of the last uh, of 10 years old, uh, you want to do more real-time analytics. Um, one of our projects we're doing is uh, it's called Smart Allocation, where you actually use live data from the smart meter to, uh, to allocate uh, electricity usage. Um, so that's a, that's a good example of uh, where the world is uh, going to, and um, uh, it's about scaling up without low, with low cost, scaling down, uh, because uh, unfortunately data is not only streaming currently, it's also a lot of batch oriented, so you have to do a lot of processing when data comes in, and the larger your meter sets, uh, the larger your meter um, uh, numbers uh, in the grid, are, the more difficult it gets. Uh, so. so that's interesting, so just sitting here, um, I've heard three different dis distinct perspectives on what analytics, you know, the value of analytics and what it can do. So I want to ask you, Einer, um, what is it utilities really understand is their need for, uh, for analytics? Where are they willing to go? How fast? And do you think that service providers are, are getting your message? Is, are things lining up well? I think it's bit, it depends on the business case you're chasing. Uh, in, in, in the case I described before, then it's not, you, you can't get into the information of the data just looking into a, a distinct piece of data. You have to have a more broad uh, picture of the data. You have to have bring data from different systems together. So, so you have to consider whether you have uh, vendors that could handle all this, or you will look for vendors that will bring you the, the raw analytic power. So, so, uh, so um, in, in, in our cases, we have had a lot of focus on, on, on established theoretical models, modeling the, the, the grid and all the, the loads and effects on the grid, and then do load flow calculation and steady estimation to actually fill in all the holes. And that's, that's another perspective in, uh, uh, compared to if you uh, use analytics to, to, to illustrate the, the consumption from an end user. So, so I think it depends on, 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 on the task that you are aiming for. Right. And, and, and yeah, I, I definitely, I was just going to ask you if you could you know, also add into whatever your remark is about to be. Talk a little <laughs> bit about um, what ITRON has done in terms of partnerships, because I think that's one of the really strong plays that you guys have made in, in terms of meeting all these different needs. Yeah, so from a partnership perspective, obviously we're, we're, we partnered with Cisco um, right. for our, our, our network communication, and that's really key for us because we see, um, we see the, the networks that we're building for the utilities essentially an, an extension of what the internet has, been, has become for the rest of the, of the world, right? So an IPv6 device with open standard protocols, TCP, IP, communicating with each other, it just, okay, it leads to the same paradigms that we've seen in the, in the telecom business with cell phones. Initially, the cell phone was this device where you make a phone call, and now we, we, still, use, we still use our phones to make phone calls, but we use it for, for, for many, many other things. So if we start thinking about uh, networked devices with computing power distributed all over the utilities landscape then uh, the possibilities of, of, of that become enormous so instead of bringing all of the data necessarily to the back office um, for all the use cases some use cases may be better served uh, of, of, the, of putting the, dis the computing power at the edge and having devices um, communicate with each other and I'll give you an example of that use case would be <coughs> theft, theft detection um, where today's version of, of theft detection is bringing a lot of data over the networks back to the back office and trying to find the correlations and uh, you know events and alarms and, and 
reduce consumption to figure out where there might be theft. In, in the distributed model, um, meters could be talking to each other on the same distribution transformer and as, as things turn on and turn off on that distribution system, air conditioners, heaters, heat pumps, those types of things, you see voltage changing, right? And the, the, the meters can communicate with each other, hey, I saw a voltage change, did you see it? Who, who owns the consumption that's associated with that voltage change, right? Okay, and if it's accounted for, we're good, but as soon as they start talking to each other, oh, there was a big spike in voltage, did you see the consumption? No, I didn't see it, I didn't see it. Mm -hmm. Oh, wait a second, there's theft here on this distribution right. circuit, right? And it, it's, it's, it's known, we know the location of it, we just raise our hand and say, somebody come, come you know, investigate. Go right? unplug that guy. Right? Yeah, so that, that's, a, that's a very good uh, use case for analytics. And one of the things I, I want to ask you, Edwin, is so as a relative newcomer to the utility space, um, uh, the role of innovation, you know, coming from a seasoned uh, teams like iTron and, you know, having these long relationships with utilities, how do you find it coming in and trying to bring in um, new ways of thinking? Mm -hmm. What would your, you know, how would you advise um, other innovators, innovators to the industry? Uh, yeah, that's, that's, uh, that's a good question. I was actually thinking about uh, the answer of Jeff. Uh, what I see happening in the... Um, and also in the internet world, uh, mm. the term Internet of Things is uh, yeah. often used and um, and that's what's also happening in the utility business. Uh, but um, added to that is what I also see, If you, you, cannot, you get a lot of information from the smart grid and use that for your analytics, but you can also correlate with any other information that's available in the area like demographic, sociological information or events happening that we can find, for example, on, uh, on the Google uh, search engine uh, using several cor correlations or trends and then combine that with meter data. So, uh, uh, given the example of uh, energy theft, uh, there could also other, other things be happening in that area. So, the same as Google uh, was able to predict the flu using the search technology, right. suddenly uh, combining other data sources that utilities <coughs> are not used to using uh, can offer them new uh, value-added services, uh, also on consumer engagement level. Uh, so, I, I think that's, that's one of the reasons why Utilities also are talking to us. Uh, of course, consumer engagement is, is the, the, the step in, so to say. But actually, my background was energy trading, and I worked a lot for grid oper operators myself. So, uh, one of our biggest clients is actually a grid, op grid operator, um, where we uh, do, do uh, things like uh, virtual power plants and stuff like that. So, right, right. Uh, w where we collect uh, huge amounts of data, uh, varying from uh, hourly, 15 minute, five minute, second values, even streaming. So. And uh, they've been doing that themselves up till now, and they, they, they realize they, they, they reach their limits in their own yeah, uh, facilities, and uh, that's why they're using systems like us. It's easier to start in the pay-per-use model. Uh, you don't have to do a lot, a lot of investments. You can just try, try it out, uh, scale up, scale down. So that's, that's, I think, one of the reasons why utilities are eager to talk to us. And um, I think we're doing more and more in that area, uh, area uh, also on operational analytics. Uh, we're now talking to some companies uh, who asked us for that uh, kind of uh, uh, services and, and features in our, in our platform. Uh. Okay, so we only have a few more minutes. Um, so I just, I want to point out like, you know, we're all coming from different places, but when I um, was working on my analytics book, the thing that I argued over and over were, these were, are the exact kind of conversations we have to be having in this industry. Um, we we need to we need to have the people that have been you know playing in this industry for a long time have seen how things have evolved, uh, working with the utilities to develop these use cases, but also have the innovative energy to and help you know bring a, a cultural shift um, to a world where that it's not just the commodity delivery of electrons anymore. It's mm -hmm. integrating into our life streams as consumers and. You know, one of the places that we've gotten caught on that in the industry is how do we, you know, consumers don't really seem to care yeah, yeah. until their lights don't go on. But, yeah. you know, now we have a, a heightened level of awareness and the, and the phones and all that. So, um, you know, before we, before we started videoing today, we were talking about the duck curve. And so where, you know, we have the solar peak just shifting completely going the other direction in in what we're used to seeing and how the daily load is on the on the grid and so i think 
we'll see much more kind of consortium discussions like this. So just uh, in, a, in a closing statement from each of you, if you could just tell me, you know, just kind of let people know what you think are the, the most high value actions you could be doing today in terms of analytics, you know, in terms of application. And let's start with you, Einer, because you're, you're in the utility. I think uh, the way we have addressed it is that we have elaborated on, on, on our big ventures in, in our operational environment. For instance, Schneider Electric is deliver us the SCADA and DMS system and then they've been very um, listening to what we actually want because they have had a primary and operational point of view but they are now starting to have a, a more focus on the planning uh, part as well. And I think you have to divide it, whether it's to, to provide information to end users on the behavior or it's to support the operation and optimization of your uh, system. And I think when you're talking about the, the, the dust optimization, I think it's necessary to have a keen focus on the modeling. You can't just have uh, individual sensors. You have to keep see it in a big uh, picture. So situational intelligence. Yes. Yeah, and so visibility into the end-to-end. -end. That, okay. that's, that's very important, I think. Yeah, thank you. And uh, Jeff, what do you think? Uh, well, I agree completely with that. And the way utilities essentially have been running, I think, until the last five, ten years with the um, with smart metering is they only have visibility into what's happening at right. the substation, right? There's no information beyond that substation. So the whole delivery mechanism really had no, it was that we were flying blind effectively, right? Until somebody called you and tells you the power's out or they're having a problem, is the only way you knew that what there really was a problem. So with, with smart meters and smart sensors and smart devices at every single delivery point, we have not only the consumption data, but voltage data and outage data, all this data is coming back. So we have this great visibility into what's happening in near real time on, on the grid. <clears throat> and uh, you know, uh, from a operator, network operator perspective, I think the, uh, one of the major use cases is, is optimization of that voltage. Um, and we're seeing real significant um, uh, value in, in that. So if uh, you lower the voltage on the distribution by one volt, you can see a one percent energy savings, right? right? And before we couldn't we couldn't lower that voltage very much because we didn't know what was happening downstream. But now with this visibility into into the whole network, we can really be more aggressive in, in voltage reduction programs. So if you're saving one, two, three, four, five percent energy on every circuit, that's that's a lot of that value. That may be the biggest win money. on the grid, yes. um, ROI perspective, that's for sure. So what do you think, Edwin? What's what's the high value action we need to be focusing on? Uh, well, I, um, I agree completely with what the guys are saying here. Uh, and the thing is, um, it's not only about um, uh, getting that information out of the grid uh, from all those different sensors and combining it into smart analytics, uh, getting value out of the data, but also immediately seeing the results. If you are changing something or something is happening in the grid based on steering signals, uh, you can Im immediately see the results by having that real-time data available. Uh, so for trends on micro level, but also on bigger level, uh, utilizing uh, uh, smart software and smart algorithms. Uh, the only worry most of our customers have is that um, what, do they, what do they do with all the data that they have? You know, you can, you can use it at that moment and throw it away later or do you store it? And what happens if you do that for the next 10 years? What, do, what does that mean for my uh, IT operations? Right. Uh, so that, that's, that's for us, I think, uh, uh, the, the biggest uh, challenge also. And um, that's why I think um, for, for businesses, is even utilities also, uh, but also other companies outside of the utility business, have to look carefully at their uh, the way they innovate and uh, utilize technology. And, and yeah, my message is, okay, um, uh, focus on your core business and let uh, uh, other companies do the other stuff that they're good at. Okay. Yeah. And that's, that's the common thread I've heard from all three of you. Like, yeah. probably... The most high value action you could be doing right now is developing really good internal and external partnerships with people who can help you do this complicated thing a lot better. Thanks. So, uh, Carol Stimmel, and uh, we're just finishing up in the Engerati studio discussing data analytics with Edwin Poot from Energy Works, Jeff McCracken from iTron, and Einar Hoffman from Dong Energy. I want to thank you guys again uh, for joining us here. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you, thank you Carol.